Life isn't about money. It's about enriching experiences and feelings, but you need money to make those experiences and feelings and you need money to have space to actually take in those experiences and feelings for what they are. So yes, money does equal happiness and happiness does equal money. Now I am someone that does not come from a really wealthy background and I've always been very conscious of financial privilege and financial shortcomings and the idea that hard work equals wealth, money and happiness. And as a young girl, I used to have big, big, dreams about having an amazing fulfilling job that brought me all of these amazing things including loads of money and because of a South Asian background this job was going to be in a certain industry in a certain vocation that was both respectable and stable. It would be something that gave me and my family status as well as a chunky paycheck. My vision included living on, buying a nice home, having a big family, going on a couple of holidays a year, maybe a couple of lavish holidays a year and this is what the majority of us are taught about what life is not only by our parents who were probably taught very similar things, but also all of the systems around us, all of the institutions that we grew up around. The more you earn, the more stability you have, the more employable you are, and the happier you're probably going to end up being. And this final objective, this ultimate happiness brought on by financial gains, increasing wealth, has snowballed into a little bit of an internet phenomenon called FIRE. Financial independence, retire early. At the best of times, this is a big middle finger to the general tradition of earning more to be happy. Happy. It's a road to the ultimate haven, financial independence, a life free of the shackles of capitalism, and one where you don't rely on a job to do the things that you actually just want to do. But that's where I think we actually have it all wrong. We treat financial independence like an end goal and we don't start living until we reach it. We write our financial goals, we commit to sticking to them, and we commit to reducing our leisurely spending every month. With every pace up that you earn, you're trying to increase that savings ratio and find another way to cut costs and live minimally. But when we do this, we're living for tomorrow, for when we can save more and ultimately like inch closer towards that golden pot of savings and investments that's going to allow us to retire early. But living for tomorrow comes at the cost of living for today, not seeing your life for what it already is. And we need more appreciation for what we can already do. Right in this moment, we can live in shelter, we can buy food that we want to buy, make meals that we actually fancy eating rather than meals that we just have to eat in order to give our bodies nutrition. Editing dive here. And I just wanted to actually add a little clip in because there's been this girl on TikTok going viral for exclaiming about how grateful she is about doing everyday things. And it's really just brought to light how Sometimes when you talk about gratitude, and especially when you feel like you're talking about silly, seemingly silly things like electricity, shelter, the food you have every day, it feels too obvious to emphasize that you're grateful for those things. But this girl on TikTok has just made them seem so much more wonderful than just writing down a line in your journal saying that you're grateful for having a home. She reframes it in a way that makes you really feel like, oh my god, I'm actually able to, like, I've literally got a box of melon <laughs> that I'm just eating while I'm editing and I can just sit and eat freshly cut melon that I literally just chose to buy from the shop because I fancied eating a melon while I was editing on my 2k computer to post to my YouTube channel which I do on the side because I have a job. You know, all this kind of stuff, once you actually deep it, the gratitude kind of overwhelms you. I get to wake up in the morning without needing somebody to help me out of bed. I'm able to go outside and breathe in fresh air. I'm able to see, hear, smell, taste, and feel the world around me. I'm able to walk on my two legs without feeling any pain. I get to come to this park I'm playing with this dog. I get to live in a place where even in the winter, the sun is on my face. I get the privilege to feel loved by friends and family and feel supported when I need support. There are so many things to be grateful for that cost nothing. I get to go grocery shopping and pick out any food that I feel like eating. I have a car that I get to drive wherever I feel like driving. My body is healthy and I'm able to move my body at the gym. I get to live in a house with big windows facing the sun and I can feel it on my face. I get to wash the dishes. I have dishes that I'm able to use. <laughs> I get to sleep in a comfy bed in a safe, warm house. 
and work in a job where yes it might not be an ideal industry you might not be earning your ideal salary per hour but you're doing something that you likely wanted to do at some point in your life and earning actual money for it and if you actually think about all the things you have in your life we have a lot and thinking about whether money can actually buy happiness the more you earn the less happy you are as you've already earned enough to buy the short-term materialistic things that you thought would give you happiness when you didn't earn as much and this is an interpretation of the law of diminishing returns applied to the rat race world that we're living in right now the rat race being the more you earn the more you think you need to earn so you keep adjusting your end goal and what you thought would make you happy doesn't end up actually making you happy in the moment you actually get that thing which is why we really need to adjust our actual definition of happiness and we need to remove it from a financial context is happy being able to extend a holiday without a second thought is happy being able to run five miles without stopping is happy being able to talk to your friends and family whenever you want once we get realistic and stoic with our definition of happy we stop that goal moving further and further away every time we chase after it when we first bite into personal finance that saving rhetoric is shoved down our throats especially in the fire community your savings rate is something that determines your fire goal and ultimately shapes your journey to retirement and saving is commonly associated to being frugal penny pinching and oftentimes being quite cheap and this is the one part of the fire community that i really agree with is funneling as much as you can into an asset and essentially turning your income into an asset and as a south asian immigrant and eldest daughter i've always craved that stability while minimizing risk and it's a generational thing to crave that safety and risk-free environment because our place in this economy was earned and it could be taken away at a moment's notice if you made the wrong choice and this is known as the scarcity mindset but in this day and age being a second generation immigrant it really will help to build that growth mindset and to accept that we can have any kind of job in any kind of industry with many different companies and that risk we've been trying to avoid for so long won't have as detrimental of an effect as it would have done back then so we can afford to diversify our savings invest in a little bit of a risky way sometimes and not just dump everything into a savings account especially with inflation available to just eat it all away but how do you build an actual mindset how do you build a growth mindset you make small decisions and you let them snowball into a life-changing transformation and i did this by creating small standing orders to index funds and etfs with money that i was happy to lose and i took a risk in creating this youtube channel and i took a risk in changing my job a few times and i educated myself by reading to books and listening to podcasts and it wasn't all the time and every day i tried to understand how the rich got rich and it always involved some sort of risk and simply put if a risk doesn't work out it's just a way of confirming that that risk wasn't an option where you move on to the next one we often assume that bad financial habits lead to bad mental health but it's actually the other way around sometimes and a study actually found that people with depression or anxiety were three times more likely to go into debt so really mental health can really influence the way you save spend and invest all your money and i mentioned having a growth mindset earlier but i want to bring your attention to the little things now your personality traits how money was treated when you were growing up whether you spoke or you didn't speak about money in your household this can all affect the way you save spend and invest as an adult and something i've loved to do is just sit and think about how i feel about money journaling was a great way for me to do this but talking to a therapist talking to a friend and some simple research can help as well the point being that nurturing your mind is a really good step in building good financial habits being comfortable and responsible with money requires you to somewhat be good with your mental health first and aggressively employing tactics to increase your savings rate and shave days off your fire date while ignoring your mental health is a great way to be completely miserable so don't forget that a bit of gratitude stoicism risk and your mental health will help you on the way to financial independence as much as all the percentages dollar amounts and monetary goals you have invest in them 